and welcome to Retro TV Radio. I'm your host, Pat McCormack. Rosalind Kind is a star. Never mind that her sister is Barbara Streisand. This younger sister of the legendary actress and singer can hold her own when it comes to doing the same as she has proven for decades. She cheerfully corrects me that even though Barbara and her have different fathers, they are indeed considered and consider themselves full-blooded sisters. And when you hear her speak and sing, there's simply no doubt about it. Her newest musical release, The Look of Love and the Island, includes a wonderful video she produced herself and shares a message that we all need to hear and remember that love conquers all and that it's never too late. Boy, do we need that now. I want to apologize in advance for the at times spotty audio on this episode. We're still picking up the communications pieces after these recent intense storms, but it is for the most part fully intact and completely listenable. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast, the immensely talented Roslyn Kind. Hey, Roslyn. Hey, Pat. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm like like you, surviving on coffee only so far. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good thing, as long as it's good coffee, right? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I first have to ask you, how's the weather? <laughs> well, right. We have sun. It's still a little chilly out here for California, but it's been sunny the last several days. Thank God we had so much rain. Yes. But we, California needs it. It's true. It's true. Just not all in one day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're up. I'm up on the central coast, so we basically get everything that uh, that you guys get. Um, you get it before. No, I think it's generally, you know, it just depends on the jet stream. Um, but the thing about this last round was the winds. Yeah, yeah, that made it extra cold and everything. Well, and dangerous. I mean, we... And yeah, people people were like calling to make sure you're safe. <laughs> it's true. Um, and it's usually I'm calling my friends, you know, in Tennessee to make sure they're safe. <laughs> and looking at New York today now is a snowstorm. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I was noticing that. And, and of course, you being a Brooklyn girl, do you miss it? I, do I visit? Do you miss it? <laughs> do I miss it? You know what? It was a great place to grow up. It was a neighborhoody place. And I mean, I could go to the store for my mother without even crossing the street. So, and I had one school, one public school that I went to on one side of the area and another school that I went to for seventh and eighth grade right, was closer to where we lived on the other side of the, of the area because it was a project. It was uh, called Vandiver Estate. So I had PS269 on the Forster Avenue side and I had uh, PS89 on the Newkirk Avenue side. <laughs> well, that's, that sounds convenient. So you didn't have to trudge 10 miles through the snow just no. to... <laughs> Yeah, not high school, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're getting pounded today. Uh, so, any, anybody out there that's got their show snow shovels ready to go? Uh, hi, you won't be hearing from us for a couple days. <laughs> oh God, I tell you, oh my, I have to check in on some of my family, see how they're doing, is they're there in the end of New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about your family. Yeah, <laughs> your family. <laughs> Well, listen, Rosalind. Yes. I gave a listen to your most recent work. And as a 40-year professional musician, I have to tell you from the heart, it's fantastic. Oh, thank you, Pat. I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's, it's, there are two of my favorite songs. And for years, I mean, I think the first time I did The Look of Love was way back at the at the back lot. And... Um, it was the first time, and I did the island there also later, but never together, never together. And um, and so one day I was like rehearsing for a new show to go out uh, on the road, and I thought, geez, wouldn't these two songs be great together? And it worked out so well that I really, I put it in my show, and I did it first when I worked with just piano, just trio, and but I, I needed to have it fully orchestrated, and that's when we first recorded it. 
with the full orchestration, and now we have the video to accompany it. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible, folks. I'll leave links, of course, for you to see and, most importantly, hear all this. You know, you had me at Bacharach. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I am yeah. just, I, I, I want to call myself the biggest Bacharach fan in history. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> because to me. Bert was great. Good, good person, too. Great person. Yes, and that's that's a plus, you know, because you know when you got somebody that artistic, you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't never really know what you're gonna you get. Never know what you're gonna get in the rest of the package. I know what you mean. <laughs> exactly, and it's like Bert, I'll take you any way you want, any way you are. It's fine with me. You know, it's funny. We, the only critique or or, or negative thing that I'd ever heard about him. Yeah. Came from someone, and I and I had to bring this up because you may know who this is. Um, I'll just come right out with it. Have you ever heard of a vocal instructor named Judy Davis? No, I haven't. Out of Berkeley, and one of her claims, to fame, besides the fact that she really worked with everybody, I mean, she she was very prominent. You had to audition to go and study with her. And ironically, I passed the audition. I don't know how, Rosalind, but I I guess out of sheer will, there I was with these just incredible singers going weekly to this this voice class. Uh And one of her claims to fame was, of course, working with Sinatra, Uh the Rat Pack. Then all of the biggest Bay Area musicians that came out during the 70s, the rock musicians, and everybody that wanted to save their voices yeah, all went to Judy um, because she was a master of mastering the, phon- right. the phonetic vowels. I, and I, as I'd never heard of her because I'm, I'm in L.A., but, you know, it's like I was so lucky most of my life. I think my sister, too. We just used to open our mouths and it was there, so we got very spoiled. So I'm a little older, and with the, the harder you work, yeah, now I have to do vocal exercises. <laughs> yes. Well, and that was the thing. She she re, she referred to Bird as back the hack. Now, <laughs> I, I didn't know why. I didn't want to know why, because I was such a huge fan then. But she also claimed, and this woman was not a BSer, Rosalind, mm-hmm. to yeah. have worked with your sister. Really? Yes. So... Quite frankly, I'm like, how do you improve on perfection? And uh, I don't know. I think that sometimes, you know, you have to learn how to sing when you have a cold and all these kind of things because all of that aggravates your vocal cords, you know, when you have a bad throat when you're sick. There are certain things you want to learn to get over, you know. Yes. I can still do a performance with 104 fever, which I've done, you know, and, and we have to get through those shows. So, you know, that's really... The hardest thing, but you know, when we do when our vocal cords age a little bit, and it's like for me, especially after after COVID, I because oh. I I really have not been out on the road yet. But my video and this release as my entrance back in. I've been so scared of COVID. Yeah. Um. So. Um. It, yeah. I mean, you have to watch it, and I I realize the value of it, and it's just easy exercises just to open and warm yourself up. But I was just so spoiled, and so was she. You know, <laughs> like. Well, you know, as that was the question that popped up in my head, I was like, "You helped Barbara with what?" Um, <laughs> and yes, folks. By the way, those who don't know, Rosalind is Barbara Streisand's half sister. Okay, we got that out of the way. But yeah, please, Pat. I'm from the same mother and the same womb in the Jewish religion. It's whole. The mother is the connective tissue. You know, if you come from a non-Jewish father and a Jewish mother, you're automatically born Jewish. If you came from a non-Jewish mother and a Jewish father, you have to go through all the ceremony to become Jewish. Hmm. So to me, I mean, uh, you know, you're raised, I really, I don't like that word half, you know? And it's so funny because in some cases, we ended up as we got older, we're like looking more alike, you know, (laughs) than we were when we were younger. But... um. I just, you know, I've never liked that. That's my, she's my sister. 
with my older sister, my my big sister. Well, I couldn't agree more, you know, in seeing you guys and hearing you guys. I'm thinking, where does that half come in? Well, I don't know. I read it, so I guess I better say it. And now I come to find out you don't like it. Oh, man. I don't like it. I don't like tell everybody <laughs> that it brings it up. But, I, you know, and I've had people change it on my on my pages on uh, on some of the record things, and I keep changing it back. <laughs> well, you know, again, just to look and see and and watch you talk and, and hear you sing, it's clear you are full blood <laughs> sisters. Well, because it also comes from the mother. Right. Her grandfather was a cantor in Russia, and our mother got the genes, and she was a soprano but never went into the business because in her era it was like, oh, they, they, no, you avoid that. It's like a bum's business, right? <laughs> From when she was a little girl, and, and so she never went into it. But she was a she would have been great as an opera singer. Our mother. Mm. Well, and again, natural ability you're born with. Mm -hmm. And then it's God given too. It's, you know, it's a gift from the universe. Exactly right. You know, it's somebody used to say as far as playing music, note wise, it's not the notes you play; it's the feeling. That's right. Well. That's right. <laughs> With singing, it's definitely part partly the notes you sing. <laughs> well, no, as long as you're not so flat and you can, you're not tone deaf. But it is. I really was. If I uh, talk to people about singing, I'm not one on the technical, but I, you know, I am a big believer in singing from your heart, the truth. Yeah. And if you don't relate to a song, no matter how great it is, you shouldn't be singing it because you need to convey that message to your audience. Right. And so um, I do believe that it's the feeling that matters. And sometimes if you just miss a note or something's a little off, but the feeling is there, that's that's what makes the hair stand up on your arms. Sure. And and again, when I listen to the Bacharach um, library, mm -hmm. you know, everything that Dion sings just blows my mind. Uh -huh. And then, you know, the look of love will come up, which to me is one of his best compositions. You know, it's yeah. got that moody, uh, so creative, just feel kind of a bossa nova. Um, right. I don't know if you would call it that, but it. Well, yeah, I, my, my medley is definitely a bossa nova. The island, and that's um, Yvonne Linz and Victoria Martins, you know, definitely Latin. In fact, when we were in working it through and, and our records, when we, it was a work in progress, we called it the Brazilian medley. Oh, yeah. And again, when I listen to Dusty's version, uh -huh. you know, I'm I'm not a fan of it. I, I, I and I think the only reason is because you, you kind of a have to <laughs> you have to a b it with Dion Warwick. And it's like, <sighs> <laughs> well, they each had their talents in their areas. Maybe, you know, maybe uh, Dusty rest in peace, I believe. It's like uh, I once gifted with her. We both were on uh, a special with Charles Osnivore in 1969. I saw that. I saw that. And, and she got to do the um, a duet with him, and she was so big towering over him, and I wasn't as big as her, but after she towered over him so much, they canceled my, my duet. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, for the record, and I'm not just blowing smoke here, I like your version better. Uh, oh, oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. And, I, of course, the string arrangements are phenomenal. I mean, it's big, folks. Yeah. <laughs> it's big. The only way to go. I love strings. I love oboe. I love French horns. <laughs> yeah, the real deal, too. Yeah. I thought to myself, okay, so Bacharach's going for that girl from, from Empanema, that imperfect, you know, which is, of course, this classic song. Right. But, but she wasn't belting that thing out. She, you know, she wasn't doing it like like the sisters could do it. <laughs> and yet the feeling of it mm -hmm. was undeniable. Right. And I mean, and some people relate it to their own lives, too, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and it depends. You know, every performance of a song is different every day, every audience, where you are at at that particular moment, you know? Right. There some things that you can hit one night and you're making people cry, you know, and other nights it's a little different. It's just, we are creatures of our early selves. So every delivery, if it's honest, is not the same every time. Yeah. And that would just be awful. <laughs> I mean, well, if, but the if point it was. Is, I'm, I'm not saying that the feeling isn't there, but it might be a little different. Right. 
depending on where that performer is at that moment in time. Right. And of course, you're personalizing it for the audience, too. So Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah. It's an if you want to get across and uh, you have to be honest with it, you know. So love, 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 love. Love, love, love. Love is love is love. Have I said love enough? <laughs> yeah. No, not enough. We need more in this world. With what we're going through in this world to get rid of all the darkness that exists in it right now, we need tons of love because everything begins and ends with love. Everything that's universal starts with love. Creation starts with love. And we have to really help help our, our globe heal. Oh, isn't that the truth? Well, yeah, and we need the angels of light to come and clear up this mess so yeah. that we have happiness and peace and love and, and uh, compassion back in this world. Yeah. Well, and of course, here we are in the dead of winter. And uh, <laughs> some people might think, oh, well, it's romantic. Springtime's right around the corner. <laughs> love is in the air. <laughs> Well, love should always be in the air, whether you're cold and snuggling by a fire or whether you're on a lake and and uh, rowing your boat with your loved one. I mean, love, you know, love and regard for others needs to come to fruition again. We've, uh, the world has lost it yeah. right now. And it's sad. It saddens me. It really hurts my heart. Well, the only thing left to do is something about it, which you are. I hope so. I mean, I was regressed in 1984 to find out what my purpose was here in life. I was going up and down in my career, and I was married, and I was separated and getting divorced. And and uh, I went and had a regression, and to, I went back to only one one time in a previous lifetime, and I found out what my purpose for being here was. And through that regression, I found out that I'm I'm meant to be here to heal. Yeah. And God gave me this voice, and that's what I'm going to use to help heal whatever my little part can be to help bring it together. Yeah. Yes. And just quickly, to, to go into a the, the process of a regression, that's a deep meditative, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> meditative. You've got it right. <laughs> I did. Awesome. All right. Well, we're done here. Thank you. <laughs> It's like, all right, slam dunk. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you ever done a sound bath? No, I haven't. Oh, my gosh. You have to do a sound bath. We had an incredible one where it almost felt like your brains were taken out, readjusted, and put back in your head. We were so dizzy when we got up, but I felt like I had pains in my lower back, and I couldn't really get onto the floor flat. And then at the first sound of the singing bowl, my back relaxed and went into the floor. It's the most exhilarating, incredible experience. And things, you see visions and things that go through your mind, it's unreal. Yeah, that, that kind of harkens me to, um, what is that, the immersive, um, what do they call that, where you get in a little chamber and it's super salty oh, water and you float. Water, lay there and you, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of meditative. And the funny thing is, is when I did that, Roslyn, <laughs> it hurt my back. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Oh, oh, <laughs> Give me good old gravity back, damn it. I can't, I can't be floating around the universe like this. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, that's the problem with gravity, though, Roslyn. For me, I need it, but it gets us all in the end, you know? It gets us all in the end. Boy, does it ever, right? How many jokes are there about gravity? <laughs> it's true. There's no escaping it. But, uh, you know, at least, though, while we're here and blessed as you are and your sister and, you know, all the great artists. And it was funny because it was, I was thinking about, I, I just saw this thing on, um, oh, gosh, was it We Are the World? Mm -hmm. Yes, I saw it too. Did you see that, the making of yeah, it? Yeah, it was wonderful. Wasn't that? It was wonderful. And I remember they had put one out when they were first doing it. Yeah. But it wasn't the, so much behind the scenes. It wasn't them getting together. It was very interesting to see people's frailties, their own vulnerabilities, no matter how great the artist. Because sometimes I feel that way too. So I related so well sometimes, you know, when you go in the studio and, and all these greats are around you and and it's how you get the voices to meld. And 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 didn't you feel sorry for Bob Dylan? I mean, <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I'm, 
that's a, talk about a vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he said it's style, you know, and it was he got it, and she went over and hugged him. <laughs> you know, and and just to give it away, folks, I'm sorry, spoiler alert, but Stevie <laughs> Wonder mimicking Bob Dylan uh. <laughs> helped him figure out his part. Yeah, and. I mean, what kind of magic is that? Yeah. And Al Jarreau drunk off his butt, and oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Huey Lewis going, I don't belong here. <laughs> I'm not worthy. I feel so much better because I know the times that I go through those insecurities as well. You know, you do go through, we all go through those things. True. You know? I mean, like, I think the sometimes the better you are at your craft, you're the more nervous than somebody who has all of this, you know, uh, courage, but they don't have the backup in talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like most, I notice most talented people, most, uh, they, they go through, have, you know, all kinds of emotions prior to getting on stage and having to get in front of people. But it's amazing. And I feel so blessed to see that I'm not the only one that goes through that. <laughs> Oh, man, you should see me right before these interviews. Holy smokes. <laughs> I was like, honey, it's, it's 10 minutes. <laughs> it's that 10 minutes, you know. It's that 10 minutes. Oh, my God. You, you know yep. the 10 minutes I'm talking about, right, honey? Yep. Yes, I do. You've done these before, Pat. Plenty. <laughs> remember. Remember. No, 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 no. This is the first one ever. It's Rosalind kind. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, but oh, that's the thing about speaking with celebrities such as yourself. 99.9% of them are the most down-to-earth, kind, appreciative, loving people, present company included. Thank you. And that's been my experience. And so I'm not as nervous as I used to get Um because I guess, you know, the thing is, is we're winging it here, folks. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I've i got a couple bullet points here, but people don't want to hear a script, you know. They right. want to hear a conversation. They want to, yeah, two people just talking. Yeah, yeah, and what an honor, too. And I'm so happy that you saw that. I, I can't remember what streaming service. Was it Was it Amazon? Or, I think, was it Netflix or Amazon? It could be Netflix. It was Amazon. It was, I think it was, oh. I can't remember I just I turned it on because some of my friends had seen it, and I I got on it right away because I was wondering whether it was the one I saw long ago, when they were first making it. But it was totally behind the scenes and, and what they went through to get that done. And how brilliant was it for them to film it? Yeah, and you know what? It's great to have those things because so you see yourself when you're younger. <laughs> yes, and they were all younger. Boy, oh boy, poor Quincy though. <laughs> God, but isn't he so he's so brilliant? <laughs> Can we all just shut up for a second? <laughs> Somebody's got to take charge. Somebody's got to take charge. And Huey, Huey's like, why do I have to go after Michael Jackson? <laughs> why? <laughs> it's like, well, it's either him or Steve Perry, buddy. Oh, oh good God. <laughs> oh, so much talent. And, and that era, yeah. too. That era. Yeah. Of music, yeah, incredible. And it was an example of Mr. Belafonte sharing the love. Yes. And, of course, then Bacharach and and, and Carol. Um, Yeah. We Are the World, was that it? No, no. Mm -hmm. We Are the World. Was that it? Wait. Wait. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wait a minute. No, what was the one? (laughs) So there was three of them done. I know that. Uh, using separate styles of artists. That's, it. that's what friends are for. It was that's what friends are for. That's right. And I'm wondering. Keep smiling, keep smiling. <laughs> I know. And I was thinking, <laughs> did they film that too? <laughs> yeah. Were they smart enough to bring a crew in for that? I don't know. But it was even more ironic. I think also whenever they recorded it, they did it not like they did the back. The behind the scenes, unless we're going to be surprised with something when you're on with that too. Right, right. It was mostly just the, the, of them doing it. Yeah. Hopefully, somebody was thinking, "Going, oh, this is this this is historic." Yes, definitely. 
everybody coming together to heal the world. And, and it's not, it wasn't as bad of a mess then. It wasn't <laughs> today. Right. Today we need all the help we can get. Yes. But, oh. Yeah. Far cry, unfortunately. Yeah. No, it's just a kind of, it's a scary time. It, it just, you know, I remember, I, mean, I grew up when, when AFK was murdered and, and we had the Cuban Missile Crisis. Oh, those were horrible days, but nothing like this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Where we are, our whole democracy is threatened and, and somebody who doesn't belong in the White House is a <laughs> God. I know. Uh, well. And, and I, it's not, you know, it's just not right what's going on. Yeah. It's not right. It's horrifying. Well, uh, let's let's put together some love songs and fix the whole okay. thing. Let's fix the world. We've got to, you know, do what's right to make it right and get rid of uh, the negativity. People need to trust each other and learn to love each other no matter what you look like. Right. If people can together with their hearts first, we could have heaven right here on earth. Yeah. That would be minus the narcissism, the greed, the, you know, the power, struggle. You don't need that. No. I mean, the stuff about that that just turns me off. Yeah. Well, well, that and half sister. So, and yeah. make sure nobody <laughs> ever says that again. <laughs> it's, it's in my notes right now. <laughs> Next time we talk. <laughs> oh man. Well, you are you are just an absolute delight. Just as like Harlan was telling me, you're gonna love her, and he was right. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. You are. You're wonderful. And like I said, I have listened to this piece, and folks, you're going to love it. You're going to, you'll find the links. And what would you like to tell the audience as far as what's coming up for? Well, <laughs> Valentine's Day is tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow, it's going to be like as of midnight tonight. It will be up there on YouTube and all on all of the digital platforms to be gotten. So everybody, I hope will give a listen and 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 purchase. We had a pre-save thing on there also. Uh, on our reels that we put up, and I I hope that everybody can can learn and love it. I mean, so far, you know, it's like it's such a scary thing when you put out new product, but I just believe in this so much because the message of love of you know, this one in particular is don't be afraid of love even after sixty or seventy. Yeah, you too can have it. You know, you can have love. Subliminally in there, too, I talk about, I have in one of my shots, love is love is love, you know, and everything, because what's right for you is right for you. It might not be right for the next one, but you know, you should not need to control the next one. You should just learn to love and appreciate your differences and your similarities and honor each other. It all starts with love, Pat. How do you top that, folks? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that says it all. And so you will find the links to uh, um, your YouTube channel, and I will spread the word. I will shout it from the mountaintops, dear one. You're, you're a true talent, and boy, your voice sounds like you're, you're in your 20s. So, My God, I owe from your mouth to God's ears, but I don't think I can relive those years. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want to? I don't know. I know, but if I could know now, know then what I know now. Yeah. But you go through, life is a path, it's a journey, and you have your ups, your downs, your side to sides, and hopefully your growth doesn't become bitter, but you learn, and you learn what you don't want to be like, and what you want to express, and hopefully it's for the positive. It makes you a better person, all those trials and tribulations, if it works right, you know what I mean? Yes, Absolutely. Well, bless you for your efforts, dear one. And again, great work. Thank you. And everybody's going to hear it, and you will agree with me. All of you will agree. (laughs) And let's spread the love, just like Rosalind says. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And My pleasure, Pat. It was lovely. Yes. Well, hopefully we'll do it again sometime soon, and I'll know. Not to say. (laughs) (laughs) This is not... (laughs) <laughs> the half sister. <laughs> we just cut her off <laughs> right at the knees. Now she's the half sister. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, you're right. That's just a horrible term. Now that I think about it, it's like, yeah, it really is. <laughs> you're only fifty percent of what we hoped. Oh my yeah, god. <laughs> 
it, it's weird to me, you know? It, it doesn't is. matter family or you know that's my sister that's my brother that's my you know it's a it's so ridiculous to pinpoint like that agreed lesson learned yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you and enjoy the rest of this winter and love is in the air love is in the air <laughs> and let it stay there and grow absolutely thank you Rosalind kind thank you pat mccormick bye bye-bye There you have it, another retro TV radio podcast in the books. Be sure to check out rosalindkind.com to keep up with all she has going on. And be sure to share her wonderful renditions of these beautiful songs in which, in my humble opinion, give her big sister a real run for her money. You'll find the links to Rosalind's social media community and the YouTube link to her newly released video within this episode's description. You can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Golden Rage of TV and on X at Golden Rage of TV One. This is your host, Pat McCormack, and thanks for listening to Retro TV Radio.